Greetings Keen Studio students, I'm Step Bro. Welcome to Online on Camera Learning. You put your auditions on tape, we'll put your instructor on tape. So before we get into one-on-one, -on -one, you do your scene and I critique you, I wanted to offer you a lesson in translating feedback. And you put yourself on tape or you go to an audition and you get feedback from a casting director, a director, another coach, and they ask you to do something with a particular section of the scene only to have someone else contradict that feedback later on. Where's the actor to know what's right and wrong? Well, good hint, there's really no right, wrong. So I've put together some feedback that real actors have received before based on their scenes and how you as actors should actually be hearing it. Let's talk. Somebody says, slow down. If somebody asks you to slow down, likely what they're saying is from an external standpoint, it seems like you are not really living in the world of the character and you're speeding through the lines because you're nervous or your body is too amped up and that does happen with actors so if that's the reason that they're asking you you might take a deep breath and try and remember all of your work and your homework on the page and then start again uh, removing some of those nerves slow down usually doesn't mean anything other than I can see your your nervousness is showing, so that's usually what that's about. You were believable, but it was a little blah. Can you make it not blah? This is generally when they can't pinpoint what's wrong with the scene. It's just, it's not working for them. And for you, what that means is your work needs to be amped up. If you've made an, a choice about what's driving the scene, it needs to be five times greater. Life and death edge of the precipice, you're about to jump off, and then if you do the scene with those kinds of uh, undercurrents and connections, then the scene won't seem blocked to them. A lot of times, little triggers in, in between can be tweaked a little bit to make it more intense for you. Please remember when I say more intense, I'm not talking about overacting. So another lesson that we have is on personal triggers. And so if you go into personal triggers, we'll talk about how as an actor, your responsibility is to feel 10 times more than the scene requires. Not show, feel. And once you feel that much more, the subtleties of your acting seem to spill out and that becomes the appropriate amount of external um, physicality. If somebody says there was better chemistry with another group of actors, that's, that's really hard to hear. It's kind of insulting to say you don't have chemistry, right? There are actually, good news, ways for you to create chemistry with a total stranger. So um, it does, it, it's not creepy. Um, what it means is when you look at the other character, you have not truly found something about them that you feel is attractive. And if you can hold on to one tiny little thing even that you can find attractive about the other person, then you will notice it. And even though you're acting subconsciously, there'll be a draw between you and the other performer. So if you're curious on how to do that, we do have chemistry building as another uh, one of our lessons. Oh, my favorite. Sometimes anger is quiet. Sometimes anger is quiet. But sometimes it's out of control and crazy, and that's the more believable way to play it. So if somebody is telling you anger has its highs and lows, and sometimes anger is quiet, usually that's because they're not actually feeling the authenticity of your anger. So. Anger generally in real life is, is crazy, out of control, and unpredictable. So the very mention of suggesting that an actor should play this one part real quiet and angry is not authentic. So do the work on what motivates the anger and try many different tactics to get your way and that should fix that problem. Stillness is important in film. This is very true, and if you've ever been in an extreme close-up, you really can't move very much. But stillness is not acting. So it slays me when I have people come to me with, what do I do when they say stillness? Do I hold myself captive and don't move? Um, that's not authentic. So think about the aspects of the scene. Is this something where a camera is going to be just between like your chin and your forehead? Yeah, then you really can't move or you're going to go out of frame. So make up a, an emotional obstacle that goes along with that. I'm exhausted. 
Okay, if you're exhausted, you're also not going to want to move much. Or maybe there are stakes involved where if anybody sees you move, then you lose. Or if anybody sees you move, they'll catch you. These are all very great ways to incorporate not moving. But please remember, stillness is not an internal acting technique. So uh, if you get that feedback, let's talk. Find the voice of the character. Again, I'm an inside out. I don't believe that once you have a proper voice for this character, then all of a sudden you feel all the things that they feel. Your voice is important, and I have had to talk actors through, you're so high-pitched, no one's going to listen to you. But train your voice, do vocal exercises, and don't let the external choice be in place of the internal choice. Still go through the emotional content of the character, choose a good objective, drive the scene, and then polish it off with external vocal changes and make sure you don't lose the intent and the motivation. This is such a big stretch for you. It's just not who you are as a human being. Um, that generally means that the work that you are doing, no matter how good, they would never see you as this character for personal reasons. Thank you very much for joining us in this how to translate feedback session and I look forward to coaching you in your own work.